Welcome to 100 Yards of Football. This is your basketball edition. Uh, I'm, I'm joined again today by Coach Will Witherspoon. I'm your host, Brian Spencer. Uh, Coach Witherspoon is the head men's basketball coach at Walnut Grove High School. I'm the head men's basketball coach at Carver College. And last week we went over uh, our predictions for the Western Conference Finals and we, we selected, we both selected the Clippers and the Lakers to represent uh, the Western Conference uh, Finals and we both selected uh, the Clippers to come out on top. So I'm interested to see coach uh, who you got coming out of the East. I think the East is a little more uh, interesting. Uh, I don't think it's quite as, uh, as easy to pick the East as it is the West. So um, your top two teams in the East coach, who, who you, who you looking at? All right. Um, you know, I, I think you, you can't, talk about the East without mentioning Milwaukee. Uh, you know, I think they have the best player uh, in Giannis. Um, you know, I, I'm, I think one of the, the, the key elements that you have to think about when you're talking about playoff basketball is uh, the role players. And, uh, you know, because of that, um, I, I really like uh, Milwaukee's ability to shoot the ball. Um, you know, I, I worry – uh, about Middleton, uh, specifically when you look at last year, uh, they really needed him. They needed his scoring last year in the playoffs, and he kind of, I think, because he was uh, forced to guard some of the better perimeter players, it took away from his offense. So I am concerned, um, you know, if he'll be offensively capable come the playoffs, but uh, they do have the best player in Giannis, and they have really good surrounding pieces around him. Uh, plus, they're one of the uh, best coach teams in the East. So, you know, I really like them. And, uh, you know, I was torn between uh, Boston and Toronto. Oh. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to give the nod uh, to Toronto. Uh, I just I think that uh, once you've been there and you have that that championship experience, um, you know, I think they all yearn for it again. I think they've been hearing the the chirping. Uh, from the media and other people that, you know, the reason that they did it was because of Kawhi. So I think, you know, your your Kyle Lowry's and your Serge Ibaka's and, and those guys are, you know, going to have a, a, a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, something to prove that that uh, they uh, were, were key components uh, to that championship run. So I, I really, really like them uh, as my, my other – top team in the West with, with, uh, I'm sorry, in the East with Boston, not too far behind. I, I, I was, I was torn. Um, you know, I, I really like Boston. Um, I just, I think that, you know, I'm going to give the edge to Toronto now just because of their experience. Right. Right. Well, listen, man, last week we, we both uh, um, had the Lakers and the Clippers and I thought, you know, um, but I thought you was going to go with the Lakers. So I, 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 we had something to debate. So today I, I decided I'm going to go off the cuff a little bit. I'm, I'm going to make sure we have something to talk about. Um, right. I think Milwaukee's a given. You know, I think that's a given. Um, like you said, they got the best player in the league. They're very well coached. Um, I think the East is, is uh, you know, when you look at the East, the top four teams are the best defensive teams also um, in the East. So um, I think that's, that, that's going to um, – Bold for a, a, a good um, series, especially in the second round um, of the playoffs. Um, uh, I, I like Milwaukee, of course. Like I said, best player in the league, very well coached. And I'm going to throw a little wrench in the game, man. Um, my number two team, man, I'm going to go with Philly, man. Oh. Um, yeah, oh. I'm going to throw Philly in there, man. You know, they they play Boston the first round, if, if, it, if it remains as it is now. You know, right. six seed and three. Um, okay. th they'll match up with Boston. Um, but I think Boston is, is is a little bit more athletic, you know, than Philly. Um, but I like Philly's size. You know, I like their size. They're versatile. And, uh, you know, most other teams um, that are going to be contending, I think, they, they're, they're mostly perimeter-oriented teams. And I think the one thing that – that Philly can provide if they decide to do it is Embiid can dominate inside, man. 
You know, he, he, he really doesn't dominate like I think he can. Um, but I think if they if they make a concerted effort to uh, establish his presence on the inside and play inside out, I think Embiid has to get like, you know, 15 free throws a game. I think now he's averaging about uh, seven, seven or eight or something like that. But I think he's got to crank that up, man. He's got to get that to about 15 a game. Um, slow the game down a little bit. You know, you, I like Ben Simmons. You know, you're talking about, what, 17, 8, and 7, his numbers or something like that. Um, you know, of course, Tobias Harris. I mean, they, you know, they pose uh, the Richardson kid. Um, uh, you know, I, I like I like them and um, the versatility that, that they have. Um, and so I'm going to throw a wrench in the game. I think that they're going to they're gonna squeeze past Boston. Mm. Um, that first round, mm. and I don't know how in the world they're gonna beat Toronto. Uh, but I'm gonna say the same thing, man. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Philly. Uh, because I, I like Brett Brown as a coach too. Now, you know, and I think if they can des- design some schemes where they can isolate and be, because everything they do now is is pick and pop, you know, and all that, you know, and be. Man, I'd like to see them create some action, some mismatches with maybe some shooters coming off screens in the lane and trying to create some mismatches for Embiid in the lane and freeing up them shooters, you know, coming off those, off of pin downs, cross screens, stuff like that in, in the lane. So, um, you know, that, that's my that's my number two, man. I'm going to go with uh, with uh, Milwaukee, of course, and then Philly's going to be my my sleeper sneaking out uh, two big, big upsets, I would say, um, over Boston and Toronto. So now, Coach, you got you got Milwaukee and you have uh, Toronto. So who you got going to go face the, the Clippers? Whew. All right. So, um, you know, I've been, been back and forth about, you know, what I really like, um, you know, about that matchup. Uh, I, I believe um, just based on uh, if you if you look at the development, um, you know, of, of Giannis's game. Uh, once they got into the playoffs, teams like to pack it in on him and, uh, right. you know, they were forcing him to hit that, that outside jumper. I right. think that, you know, Toronto has uh, multiple guys who can defend Giannis uh, and Siakam uh, and Ibaka. Um, you know, they got multiple guys with length uh, that they can throw at him. And you know, I, I think because, Toronto doesn't have one person that you necessarily need to key on. It can be different people uh, every night, you know, whether it's, you know, it could be Gasol brother, it could be Baca, it could be Siakam, it could be Lowry. Um, You know, they've got so many different guys uh, that can do it. And it's never the same guy every night. Um, I'm going to give them the slight nod, uh, you know, over, over Milwaukee, just because uh, I, I think that, you know, the, the formula to beat Milwaukee is already kind of out there. And, right. and while Giannis has improved and he's gotten a lot stronger, I, I don't I don't trust his the consistency on his jumper enough right. uh, for, you know, for that that formula to change. And I, I think um, that championship pedigree will will show itself uh, in the bubble. Um, they just you know, they've. They've been focused. There aren't a lot of distractions, and I, I'm going to give Toronto uh, the nod. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say Toronto in six. Okay, Toronto in six. Okay, I like um, it. I like it. I like it. Well, those are some good points, man. If, if as you guys can see, Coach Wilson's on top of it. He knows the game. Uh, gives some good points. If you like this video, please like like the video, like the page, share the video, and leave your comments. We will get back uh, to your comments as well later on. Uh, Coach, you know, great points with Toronto, man. Um, I like that. And, you know, basketball is, is like boxing. You know, I think styles make – boxing styles make fights. You know, I think the same thing here. So the reason that I gave uh, – bought, I mean, uh, Philly an edge with uh, Boston and Toronto is that the Embiid factor. But going up against Milwaukee, they don't have that. You know, you got both the Lopez brothers. Um, I, if, if, if they pick and pop with Embiid, I'm happy. I'm going to live with the result. 
That's just how I feel about it. But if they use him on the inside, I don't think he has the advantage on the inside against the Lopez twins like he does on the other teams. Um, so uh, I think, uh, you know, like you said, Giannis, best player in the league. Um, Middleton, proving he can score. Um, and, you know, they have some they have some solid pieces. And a lot of people don't like, like Bledsoe, you know, but Bledsoe's solid. You know, he's not great, you know, but he's solid. And then, you know, of course, you got uh, George Hill um, as well, who, who's proven since San Antonio, and he's proven himself uh, to be a, a solid role player as well. Um, I just don't think they have Toronto. I mean, uh, Philadelphia has what it takes to beat Milwaukee. You know, um, I don't. I don't know who they're gonna put on Embiid. I mean, on uh, on uh, on Giannis to slow him down. You know what I mean? Like he he really he gets that thing off the rim, man. It's it's a problem for for Philly, I believe. Um, but let me. But I want here's what I want to ask you, Coach. I want to ask you this. All right. If 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 you're uh, coaching Philly, mm. I know you pick Toronto, right? If you're coaching Philly and you're going up against Giannis, who are you going to put on him? And are you going to – and who else are you going to take away? Are you, are you going to just play off of Giannis and take away everybody else? Or are you going to play off of Giannis and then just key on Middleton? Or how, what, what, what would you do? I think, um, you know, I think what makes uh, Milwaukee so good – is uh, their ability to space the floor uh, with capable shooters around Giannis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, both the, the Lopez twins being able to shoot, uh, Bledsoe, you know, Middleton, uh, guys like that uh, spacing the floor. So what I would do, um, you know, you have a capable, uh, versatile defender in Ben Simmons. Um, I think Ben would be the person that I would put on Giannis. Okay. And, you know, I would – I personally, I would tell Giannis to have at it, and right. you, you, I, I would stay home on those shooters, and not let those other guys uh, get going and get comfortable. And uh, you know, I, I think Giannis is very capable, um, you know, of 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 beating you. But I, I really like uh, Ben Simmons' uh, ability to defend. Um, now, also now, now, if you do that, Coach, um, if you put Simmons on Giannis. You know, Simmons is one of your your main creators right. for your offense. Right. Is that going to affect his ability to create on the offensive end of the floor for other people in terms of energy? It it will. However, if if we're going with your strategy of you know allowing Embiid to if we're running our offense through Embiid in the post, then you're slowing the game down, and you're not necessarily dependent on you know, his ability to create, um, you know, at the same rate that you would uh, if you were playing your normal style. So, you know, I, I would I, I like your your strategy and, and slowing it down and, and running things through Embiid. I, I personally believe uh, Embiid is one of the, the toughest people to stop, uh, especially on the low block. And I don't care how much length, um, you know, Milwaukee has. I, I believe if he uh, asserts himself down on that low block that they don't have anyone that can check him. And, uh, you know, that would be uh, the game plan until they, they did something uh, to make me change mine. But that would be my initial uh, game plan kind of going into it. I would, I would put Simmons on him and uh, leave him on an Island. And, you know, when you, when you look at Simmons, he has proven to be one of the more uh, versatile defenders in the league. And, right. you know, the awards come out, um, he'll be a first uh, first team right. defensive right. Uh, player. So I, I think he's he's capable. Um, he's got really good length, and you know Giannis is going to have to hit some outside shots. I mean, he, he is. I, I'm gonna lay off of him. Simmons is strong enough to not just get you know bullied to the hole, but right. you know, he's gonna have to hit some some jump shots before I come out there and, and honor that. And even then, uh, you know, I think it's a, a pick your poison kind of thing, and it was. Right. Similar to what you were saying with the pick and pop game with with Embiid, if Embiid is shooting jumpers, I mean that's you'll live with that. So it is. Right. if Giannis is 
if Giannis is hitting that outside shot, you're going to have a long day anyway. So, right. That's right. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, I would, I would live with him hitting that perimeter jumper, but I, I think Simmons is capable uh, of, of guarding him, you know, for a playoff series. Right. Okay. Love it. I love it. I love it. Again, if you like this video, please like the page, uh, share the page, comment on the video as well. Uh, this is 100 Yards of Football, your basketball segment, joined by Coach Will Witherspoon, uh, head coach at Walnut Grove High School. So now, Coach, you got the you got the uh, Lakers, I mean the Clippers, and the Milwaukee, I mean Toronto, and Toronto. So who's going to be crowned the 2020 NBA champions of this uh, uh, kind of unique uh, pandemic season? All right. So, um, you know, I, I've I've never wavered uh, since the season started, um, you know, from my from my pick. And they right. have they, they haven't given me any reason not to believe in them uh, from the very beginning. Um, you know, I love the combination of Kawhi and, uh, and Paul George. Uh, I love uh, their length. Um, you know, I love their versatility. They got, you know, the, the Morris twin, um, right. you know, they've got, uh, two 18, uh, point ga per game scores, uh, off the bench and Lou will, and, um, you know, uh, Harold, uh, yeah. they've got, um, you know, they're one of the best defensive teams in the league. Uh, they're one of the best coach teams in the league. Um, I think that, uh, while I like, um, Toronto's ability to uh, to to make it there. I just I I think that you know especially in the playoffs, uh, stars kind of um, you know they're what take you there. They're they're what get you there. Um, you know in in the NBA and you know Kawhi has proven uh, that that he can do it and he, he right. did it for you guys and he's right. he's gonna do it to you. Uh, this year <laughs> in the, in the <laughs> did it for you. Now he's going to do it to you. And, uh, yeah. you know, help up uh, a healthy Paul George. And, you know, right. I just I think that they're going to be uh, too much for Toronto. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to, going to say Clippers in six, uh, but I, I not uh, diminishing anything uh, that Toronto has done. I just, I, I don't think right. they'll have enough offensive firepower. And, um, you know, defensively, the, the Clippers are going to be locked in. It's going to be really, really difficult, uh, you know, to score on those guys. And they've got so many, you know, not just great individual defenders, but, you know, collectively, right. um, they're, they're really good too. But you know, to, to be able to have three guys that you can put on an island and no help, you know, you, you, can, you can stay home. And I, I just not many teams have that. And I, right. I think because of that, um, I'm, I'm going to give them the nod. So I'm going to say Clippers in six uh, over Toronto. So Doc Rivers, Doc Rivers gives them another one. Okay. Yes, I, like I like it. I like it. Well, listen, you, you had Toronto and the Clippers. I had the Clippers and uh, Milwaukee. And um, for me, it's not, it's not a lot of thought at all for, for a lot of the same reasons that you said. The Clippers, man, they just, uh, like you said, two 18-point scores coming off the bench, um, proven scores in, 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 um, in Kawhi and Paul George, uh, the defensive versatility. You said versatility, but I like the defensive versatility, man. That, Like you said, put different guys on an island, but then you can switch everything to if you want to. I mean, they just they can do so many different things. And then when you look at their coaching staff, the ability – to take advantage of that versatility. When you have those, all those different minds that they have on that coaching staff, they're going to, I just think that, uh, whereas, you know, Milwaukee's talented, you have a great player in Giannis, um, you know, they have, they have some pieces. It's going to be hard for them to score um, uh, on that team with the, with the versatility that they have on defense. And then it's going to be hard for them to stop them from scoring as well. I just think that uh, the Clippers are too much for for Milwaukee, and I'm I'm a, I'm gonna say the Clippers in five. Ah. you know, um, I I think Giannis is good for one. 
<laughs> I, I, I want to say that he's good for two, but I just, I just, I really think the Clippers are, are head and shoulders uh, above Milwaukee in this matchup, especially on that stage. Um, you know, in, in, in a game during the season, that's one thing, but in a playoff series where um, you got to meet the same people every single night, I think the versatility that that the, that the Clippers have is just is just way too much for. Um, Milwaukee to, to stand with. So I got Doc Rivers getting this, getting him another one as well. Uh, but I, I got him doing it in five. So listen, like again, once again, if you like this video, like the video, share the video, comment on the video. Coach, your last thoughts on, uh, give us your last thoughts real quick, just on the uniqueness of the season and, and um, you know, the bubble action that they have going on, um, the guys being isolated. Just give you your quick thoughts of, kind of sum up um, the uniqueness of this season and how it's going to affect this playoff run. Well, I, I think, um, I think we're, we're in unprecedented times. And because of that, uh, you've had to do things that uh, you're not accustomed to doing, um, you know, so, uh, you know, the, the bubble aspect is something that um, we, uh, we, we, we had been hearing about, but uh, kudos to the NBA for actually being able to uh, to execute it. I think they've done a, a phenomenal job uh, keeping everybody healthy. Um, you know, I, I love that, you know, they've uh, continued to uh, advocate for uh, social injustice um, right. even while they while they've been there. Um, you know, I, I, I think a lot of these guys, uh, you know, it's like a glorified AAU tournament. You know, where you, <laughs> you go and uh, you, you go to a facility that has multiple gyms and right. you know, you, uh, you're, you're there until a champion is crowned. So, right. you know, I, uh, you know, I, I remember uh, those days when, when I was younger going on a Friday and, you know, staying until, you know, late Sunday if late I'm in the championship. So, right. you know, these guys are they, – they've done that before. Um, you know, they're used to it and, uh, you know, they're professionals for a reason. So I, I think that, you know, the, the product that they're going to put on the floor, uh, is going to be a professional one. I think we, um, it's, it's a luxury to have sports, professional sports back. Um, you right. know, I think it, uh, gives us hope, uh, that, that we can, um, you know, we can still salvage, um, you know, our own seasons and, you know, if we continue to do things, um, you know, where where we're trying to be safe, uh, it can be done. And, uh, you know, I just I'm, I'm thankful to those guys for, you know, putting their own, um, you know, families kind of not not aside. But I mean, you know, a lot of them don't have their families there. You know, they, right. they have their families to, um, you know, to, to go to work. And, you know, I respect that. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to uh, a productive and a safe playoff season down in Orlando with the bubble. I'll definitely be tuned in. Right. Appreciate that, Coach. And, yeah, I, my final thoughts, man, I just – it's a unique situation, man. Nothing nothing like this ever before. We've had strikes and things like that, but nothing uh, on this level in terms of uh, the seriousness of people's safety and stuff like that. So – um, kudos to the NBA, man. The NBA has always been like one of the leaders in how they do stuff, how they go about things, man. They they really always seem to uh, find a way to find the best way to do things, uh, the best way to handle things for the fan. Um, you know, the NBA experience is one of the best experiences there is out there. Um, so I kudos to them for that, for Adam Silver and how they handled everything. And uh, like I said, I know them guys are uh, some of them guys are loving that, man. You know, uh, uh, you know, being being away from your family, those that are away from their families don't like that aspect of it. But you know, you see some of the creativity with guys are taking their taking children's books and different things with them so they can FaceTime their kids and, and do all that stuff and read to them on FaceTime. So um, it's just it just shows uh, what we can do. Um, when put under pressure situations. And that's what I love about sports, man. Sports just, sports is not life, but it's a reflection of life. And it can help you in life, the the, the, the lessons that you can learn from it. So 
Um, I appreciate having the game back. Man, I've been back in the gym myself, so I'm excited about what's to come uh, in this shortened season. So, like, we get right into the meat of it. For me, uh, uh, I don't have to go through 82 games, man. We can just get right at it and, and see uh, the best play the best. So, uh, I'm, I'm loving that, man. I'm appreciative of having it back. So, Coach, appreciate you once again, man. Great job. Um, thank you all for watching this segment of 100 Yards of Football, the basketball segment. Uh, we'll be back again next week with another great topic. And once again, if you like the video, please like the video, share it, and comment on it. And until next week, remember, a life is not important except in the impact it has on other people's lives. So go out and impact somebody's life in a positive way.